Good evening, everyone. All of the music for tonight's celebration can be found in your worship aids. Please join in singing our gathering song on the first uh, page of the worship aid, Come Holy Ghost. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Peace be with you. And so as we do each and every year, we, we come here. We're honored to be joined by the new Bishop of Brooklyn, Bishop Robert Brennan, along with Monsignor Grimaldi, the Vicar General, the Rector of St. James Cathedral Basilica, Father Patterson, the Rector of the Co-Cathedral St. Joseph, Father Henu, and Father Carlos Velazquez of St. Bridges Parish, and Monsignor Lepinto of Catholic Charities, so to the priests, to all the judges, to all those involved with the Catholic Lawyers Guild and the Colombian Lawyers, welcome as we really ask God to guide us and that we ask for that invocation of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you for joining us and for those who are joining us on TV, welcome and may God bless all of us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, 
And therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the paraclete who proceeds from you, we pray, O Lord, enlighten our minds and lead us into all truth, just as your Son has promised to live and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased. Upon him I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out, nor shout, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. The word of the Lord. is he beyond all gods for all the gods of the nations are kings of naught but the Lord made the
from Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the very same Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be expressed in words. God, who searches the heart, knows what the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Gospel. anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. going to begin with a little bit of an apology um, for my voice. It doesn't <laughs> quite sound at full strength, and um, I, I assure you I've tested for COVID every day this week, <laughs> coming up negative, so that much is true. But uh, it's funny, in the first part of the cold yesterday, I felt a lot worse than I sounded. Today, I sound a lot worse than I feel. That's the way it goes. You know,
First, I want to welcome all of you here and thank you for doing this. This is an honorable tradition that goes way, way back and you uphold it so well here in Brooklyn, just as they do in Queens. I had the privilege, I worked very closely with the Catholic Lawyers Guild in Nassau County for many years when I was Vicar General over that way. And so I got to know the members and the importance of the work of the Guild and the importance of this Red Mass. So your presence here says a lot. Thank you to all the judges who have come. You place a priority on our unity in faith, our unity in prayer, and that at the beginning of the judicial year, we take the time to stop, to ask God's guidance along the way, to draw on the power of the Holy Spirit. By chance, I was invited this year. They called the local boy back. I it's, uh, preached at the Red Mass in um, Nassau County. And it so happened that the Red Mass took place on October 11th. October 11th marked the 60th anniversary of the opening of the Second Vatican Council. Now we know a lot about the Council and we also know that talking about the Second Vatican Council um, evokes a lot of emotion on both sides of the spectrum. We focus in when we talk about the Second Vatican Council on a lot of the visible things such as the language and the posture during the sacred liturgy. But the real groundbreaking news of the Second Vatican Council came in chapter five of the dogmatic constitution on the church, Lumen Gentium. And that was the universal call to holiness. The fact is that each of us, all of us, are called to holiness. Holiness is not something that's re served to a few chosen few who are living off in monasteries and the like. Thank God we have monasteries and that kind of holiness. But holiness can be and needs to be found in every sector of life. In every sector. Holiness is the call of every Christian to, that to take that encounter with Jesus Christ and let it inform and direct our lives. The Second Vatican Council, that document on holiness, spoke about the um, holiness being the living out of, pa of, of charity, the living out of integrity, each of us in our chosen field, each of us in our daily responsibilities. That's rooted in a life of prayer. Like it says in that first reading, holiness is, and the witness to the gospel is not crying out, nor shouting, nor making our voices heard in the street. But, especially in your field, it is about faithfully bringing forth justice. Faithfully bringing forth justice. He will bring forth justice to the nations. Holiness is found in marriage, in Christian marriage. As you live out your marriage vows, <clears throat> faithfully, generously, making all the sacrifices. It's found in families, in parents who are living, struggling sometimes, but working to provide the best that they can. Next week we'll celebrate All Saints Day. Pope Francis speaks about the saints next door. That's the definition of holiness. So for us, the message of the gospel today, the message of our liturgy is you are holy. You are holy people living out a holy vocation. Now you might not hear that on the street all the time, but indeed, you are holy people 
living out a holy vocation. And I thank you for that. You know, I've been using a book here in, in the uh, diocese that speaks about um, this shift in the culture from a society of Christendom to a society of apostolic mission. The real short version is that the church today has the experience more like that of the first apostles of Jesus after the resurrection than the church in which I grew up. The age of Christendom was that one where people identified by a common set of values. Not only Christians, but society kind of was held together by a shared set of values. <clears throat> when you talk about Christendom, the age of Christendom and the age of apostolic mission, I always say Brooklyn is the best example of both. Remember, how did people identify where they came from in Brooklyn in the past? By their parish. We had one auxiliary bishop, I'm not, I don't have a name, but tell me, people told me the story that even the waves stopped in Rockaway when the Angelus bells rang from the church. <clears throat> but you know what? Brooklyn today is really that land of apostolic mission now. And that doesn't call for lamenting an age gone by or longing for, with nostalgia, for the so-called good old days. Both approaches have their pitfalls. Bottom line, in an age of Christendom, it's easy to get complacent. In an age of apostolic mission, we, we fear or cowardice is the great struggle. So what does it call for? This age calls for authentic witnesses. People like you, rooted in the gospel. You see, here you are today. Rooted in the gospel, filled with that encounter with Jesus Christ. And then letting that be the driving force of your life and that of your families. That's not to say it's all about proselytizing or anything like that, but it's a, it's a view, it's a world view, it's a reality. It's a way of looking at the world, not just as it appears. You know, in another prophecy of Isaiah, he speaks of Jesus, he says, not by hearsay shall he judge, nor by appearance shall he decide. You know that. The call of Catholic Christianity is to look deeply into reality. Going back to that Second Vatican Council, another document, the Pastoral Constitution on the Church in the Modern World, says that the Church and people of faith are called to interpret the signs of the times through the light of faith. We bring, a, we're called to bring a certain interpretive tool, again, to look more deeply into reality. So, ladies and gentlemen, your presence here speaks volumes. Presence here speaks volumes about your priorities, and I thank you for that. As we all strive in this coming year now to continue to live those, <coughs> excuse me, to live those Christian virtues. To live with faith, hope, and love, and to let those be the hallmark out of our lives. May it be in the exercise of your responsibilities as lawyers, as judges, as professional people in so many world, ways to leave a mark on this society so that others may come to know the truth and find the joy of living in 
the truth. Having received the assurance of the Spirit's presence in our celebration of the Word of God, we turn to our Father aware of our needs and His love. For the Church throughout the world, that under the leadership of our Holy Father and the bishops, all Christians might be examples of justice and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Muslim, Jewish, and Christian brothers and sisters, that as followers of Abraham and children of the one God, we may affirm together the goodness of all creation and the dignity of life, which has God as its origin, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the leaders of society, that they may govern with constant awareness that you are the source of their authority and that they might be worthy of their public trust, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who have been victimized by any form of violence or by any selfishness, greed, and neglect on our part, that they may be healed and restored, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the legal profession, that we might persevere in our commitment to justice for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Catholic lawyers, that through the Holy Spirit, our commitment to do justice might be nourished by our faith in the dignity of every human person from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, including the Honorable Miriam Surulnik, that in their suffering they may find comfort from God and those who love them, we pray to the Lord. For all the deceased, including Carol Caputo and past presidents, Rosario Diapis, Lawrence Morangello, Louis Reale, and John Walsh, and all those who have worshiped with us at the Red Masses in the past, and those who have worked with us in our profession, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now add our intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, we pray that you send your spirit into our hearts to enlighten and strengthen us in all we do. May that spirit enable us to always to pray with Jesus, your will be done through Christ our Lord.
Look, we pray, O Lord, on the spiritual sacrifice placed on your altar with loving devotion and give your servants a right spirit so that their faith may make these gifts pleasing to you and their humility commend them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you bestowed gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid so that with the heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy. Through Christ, our Lord. And so, in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Please join in singing our communion song found in your uh, program, Prayer of St. Francis. despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. Oh, man. 
Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal. Lord, our God, who have been pleased to nourish us with heavenly food, pour, we pray, the delights of your spirit into the recesses of our heart, that what we have done devout, that what we have devoutly received in time, we may possess as a gift for all eternity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our ascending song in your program, America the Beautiful. <laughs> 